Hello everyone, this is AJ with YourSongPlan.com and today I want to show you the secret songwriting weapon that will change your life. So what is it? Alright, it's studio monitors. Why will studio monitors change your life? Well, they allow you to listen to all of your favorite songs like you've never heard them before. Super clear. You can hear every detail. You can hear every instrument. You can hear every effect that's used on every instrument. It will change your life. Why is this? Why do studio monitors have this life-changing effect? Let's take a look. So most of the time, you listen to your music on crummy speakers, like your CD boombox, your car stereo, your earbuds, and the picture of your music that you're, they're giving you looks like this. It looks like this blurry canyon here. You can see it's uh, rock formations going on, some canyons, I don't know, right? This is pretty cool looking. Now when you hear out of these studio monitors, your music sounds like this. All of a sudden, you can see every single detail. You can see the individual little patterns that are etched onto the rock formations. You can see the background, you can see the foreground, you can see the shadows. All of these little details that go into making this candy, now you can see. That's what getting studio monitors is like. Alright, so why are studio monitors so much better than your usual speakers? Let's look at a frequency map. It's a map of frequencies ranging from 10 hertz to 40,000 hertz. And so the human hearing range is only 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. So let's look at one of the worst speakers in the world, which is a smartphone speaker. Anything you're hearing out of the smartphone speaker is going to be pretty lousy, because yeah, as you can see, the range is only from 500 to 5,000. Very narrow slice of the what you can hear of the human hearing range. Laptop speaker is a little better. It's 100 to 12,000. Still pretty, pretty lousy. So what's the deal? Your crummy speakers lie. So you have your laptop. He's giving you a thumbs up. He's telling you what you're hearing is the song. That's how the artist intended you to hear it. Not at all. What's going on is all the low instruments, like the kick drum, like he's crying, is being shelved out. You can't hear him. Bass, you can't hear it. Hi-hat, you can't hear it. What you might be able to hear is the singer, the snare drum, the guitar, mid-range things, but still not. you're not going to hear them the way they're supposed to be heard. So, we have the Yamaha HS5, so you see the frequency range is 74 to 24,000. That's pretty good coverage of your hearing range. There's not a lot you're missing out on. Some very low frequencies. If you're listening to house music, that might be an issue, but probably not in other cases. And it's not just about the frequency range. It's also about what's called frequency response. So how even is the frequency does it respond across these frequencies? This is a map of the frequency response of the Yamaha HS5. You can see it's pretty flat across that line. Here's a frequency map of some other kind of speakers. I don't know what these are, but they're really crum crummy speakers. I mean, you can see how crazy these dips and um, hills and valleys are on this one, right? So these studio monitors don't have to be expensive. For example, the Mackie CR3s are only 99 bucks. That's pretty good. And the deal is make sure that you get what are called studio monitors. Anything else, hi-fi, stereo, whatever, not going to do the same job. Get studio monitors. So once you've got your studio monitors, it's very important to find the right spot in your room. How do you find the right spot? Here are a couple guidelines. The first step is to make sure your speakers are pointed towards the long ways of your rectangular room. If you have a rectangular room, point them long ways across your room so that they'll be shooting sound long ways across your room. be a lot better than shooting short ways. The next tip is to make sure your speakers are the same distance from the sidewall as they are from the back wall. And that distance apparently should be about four feet. The next tip is to make sure your speakers are in an equilateral triangle with your head so they're equidistant from themselves and your head. The next tip is to make sure that your, yourself, your listening position, your head, is 38% of the way down your rectangular room. So about one third. The next tip is to make sure your speakers are angled at your head, not pointing straight, but angled towards your head. And then the final tip is to make sure your tweeters, that's the part of your speaker that produces high frequencies, make sure that's in line with your ears. All right. So why not headphones? Well, the first reason is because headphones are uncomfortable and you end up with sore ears like this guy. The second reason is because headphones don't provide accurate bass response. So you see what's happening is he's being hit by these bass waves, and that's not going to happen with headphones. They're going to hit your ears, which is not the same thing. So speakers are going to give you a much nicer, much more realistic bass that's going to just sound much nicer. So good headphones are just as expensive. For example, these headphones right here, Sony MDR 7506, 99 bucks, just like the Mackie CR Freeze. You're not going to save any money getting headphones. So in conclusion, Get some good speakers, set up a good listening spot, listen to your favorite songs and be amazed at the difference because everything will sound so much clearer. You'll be able to hear every little detail that's going on and it's going to change your life. 
Thank you very much for watching. I hope this helped.